Thanks to our video sponsor, BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? I know for me, I've struggled with feeling overwhelmed all the time and hypersensitive to any negativity or conflict. And that's made me feel stuck and ashamed. But with help and a better understanding of what makes me tick, I've been able to be more at ease and feel more capable too. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating within 48 hours. It's professional therapy done securely online and is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash tiny house. That's better H-E-L-P. And just for tiny house expedition viewers like you, save 10% off your first month with betterhelp.com backslash tiny house. I'm Sally. This is my tiny home, and we are in Pahrump, Nevada. I picked a container home when I found out that it can withstand 100 mile an hour winds. When I realized, because uh, where I did live before, I was surrounded by trees, which is beautiful, but you don't want in the middle of the night one to come through your roof, and that happened twice, and added to my anxiety. And so the thought of having a metal outer shell, I think to myself, if a tree falls on me, big deal, right? And I feel so safe and secure. Living tiny has, has allowed me to live the life I want to, which is there is a place for everything and everything is in its place. And so, you know, the older you get, not only do you forget why you walked into a room, but you also think, well, I know where that is. It's in a closet in that third bedroom, you know. And here, just think about where is it? And I know because I've just downsized so much that I've just kept the things that I actually need. Well, this week is my one year anniversary of moving my home over here to Pahrump. I actually named it the SS Freedom. And the reason that I did that is because every year, instead of having a New Year's resolution, I pick a word. And for 2020, my word was freedom. And I sold my home, I moved out of state, I bought a tiny home. So I experienced as much freedom as I possibly could. So that is why I named her the SS Freedom. I have an RV certified tiny container home on wheels. It is 20 feet long with a six foot, eight foot deck. I can't remember on the front of it. It also has a full rooftop deck my home is uh, 160 square feet, which sounds very, very small, except that uh, it's just, it's not. Perfect for me. I am able to enjoy a lot of places that is outside, including my picnic table. I have a seven by 11 foot storage shed for some of my toys and things that I just absolutely could not get rid of. But my best thing that I love about my home is my rooftop deck. And up there, you are able to enjoy the most beautiful sunsets uh, you will see. This is a place where I spend a lot of time. I have morning coffee out here. I sit and watch the sunsets a lot. Um, and I love the decking that they have used. It's Trex decking and it is wonderful. It cleans up so well. It never looks worn. And I would highly recommend you putting that down if, you were, if you're using it for your outdoor uh, decking. 
my deck is actually attached to the trailer so when I will move my home everything goes goes along with it so let me show you my rooftop deck the rooftop deck also has the Trex decking on it which I love I have a lounging area here in the middle for when I want to come out and just sit in the sun, uh, come out in the evenings and watch the beautiful sunsets here. I also have a table and chairs in the corner. I can have people over. We can have meals up here. We are completely surrounded by mountains here. So in any direction that you look, you will see that terrain. And I absolutely love that. I also wanted to point out that when I would go to move this unit, these railings fold down, and so it keeps it at the, the uh, correct height as you're traveling uh, around with a tiny home like this. So that's a pretty cool feature that they do. I don't have it out here now, but I, I do have a 48-inch Jason Weld pool. It's 12 inches high, and I love it. I absolutely love it. I can sit in it. I can float. Uh, it keeps me very cool on these very, very hot Nevada summer days. And now I would love to show you the inside of my tiny home. Come on. So one of the concerns that I had was being locked into my unit um, from the outside. Um, I did raise three boys, so I know that would be the very, very first thing that they would do, thinking that it was very funny, um, but I did not want that to happen. So I had them build me a pen, and it also, one out here allows the door to stay open when it's really windy. It keeps that from going and then all you have to do is pull it up there's a hole down here that the pin drops into where the door doesn't close all the way therefore nobody can lock me in but I can lock myself in which is exactly what I wanted to see I have both a glass sliding door but I also have a screen door that is awesome because I'm able to keep that open when those days are a little bit cooler and it keeps the flies out. On my quest to find a spot for, for my tiny home, I was lucky enough to meet a realtor from a little town outside of, of Vegas and we kind of got into a little bit of an accident in her car so then after that you know there was just a connection so instead of her selling me land she then started renting me my spot which is so cool and we did we get along great and I came back over uh, and just kind of stood in the spot where my home would be and I fell in love I was surrounded by trees the mountains, it was just everything that, that, that I, I, I really wanted. And there's actually an Airbnb next door that I helped them to manage. So, you know, it's just, it's been a perfect world, you know, so it's been, it's been awesome. Welcome to my tiny home. I wanted to let a lot of people out there know that I feel like the older I get, the more I understand that independence is very, very important to us. And to be able to uh, live independently is something that we strive for. So probably two of our biggest fears is not only running out of money, but it's also living in a home, not having to either go to uh, an assisted living or to go to a family member's home. And I would like you to know that if you are living tiny like I am, it is so affordable and is something that you really need to research because I do believe that you can live comfortably surrounded by all of the things that you love and live in a tiny home. 
in my tiny house, I was able to take all the artwork that I had in 1,300 square feet and condense it down into my most favorite things in the whole world. And I'm completely surrounded by it every day. There are so many things that I read on a daily basis. They are my mantra. They are things that encourage me and inspire me. And I think that it's so important that you are surrounded by art. When you first walk into my home, you are in my living area. I have a Murphy bed in here, which looks like it's just a couch that was made specifically for this tiny home. Over here I have my TV, I have my sound bar. Um, I'm able to sit here and watch TV, or if I'm in my bed, I can put pillows up on the back and just have a bigger space to lounge and watch movies on a very, very chilly night. This here is a butcher block table that I had made because I did want a, a table. Um, it, it is almost flush with the wall and then all you have to do is pull it up. So then I'm able to either eat here or I can uh, do some computer work. I can do writing, just any, any kind of things that I, I would like to do. So this is really a good spot. So my Murphy bed, a lot of people ask me if it's really hard to make. And the thing is, is that you should be making your bed every day anyway. It's really no harder than just making a regular bed. I have a full size mattress. I have my comforter that stays on there. And then my pillows are stored in the storage underneath. So my Murphy bed has these two handles that I only really need one to pull because it's very, very easy to come down. I do have a full-size mattress inside. Uh, the mattress came from Ikea and is so, so comfortable. Because, I mean, again, I kept the most, you know, what was really important to me. So, if you want to know, my mother worked at Delco Electronics and she retired back in the 80s. But back in the day, this is what she did was she built these transistors and she'd look through a, a microscope and weld these little pieces on here. So I've kept this in remembrance of her. Um, my father, who passed away in 1970, I was actually 14. He started the Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts organizations in Kokomo, where I'm from. And in 1970, before he passed away, they gave him an official recognition award, which is super cool. And then, of course, here are my grandchildren. I am missing one picture, but I always usually get one for Christmas, so I'm just kind of waiting on that this year <laughs> for sure. These are my children. I have three young men now. Of course, my favorite person in the world, Ruth Ginsburg. She is my person that I wish I was more like her. Probably over half my life, what has been one of my biggest fears is being in my home. Uh, and that was due to the fact that you know, I was assaulted and beaten and raped in my own home. And so I have been searching for years to find a safe place and to find somewhere where I could close my eyes at night and really get some good sleep. And so therefore, I, you know, my, my behavior has always been uh, improving uh, year after year. And also the fact that I, you know, I'm always pushing myself, always forcing, you know, things to, to change. And so I decided that maybe changing from living in the same town where I was assaulted, that maybe by going somewhere else that I would lose a lot of those fears. But then I actually needed to find a place that was affordable and a place that, that was all me. You know, it was just 100% me. What was exciting 
to think about was even though I came from a three bedroom, two car garage, you know, big, big house for me, I was only actually utilizing a certain amount of space, right? So, you know, the kitchen to the bedroom to the bathroom, basically, you know, and so if you kind of measure that out, I have been living tiny with all this other stuff, you know, material things. And so I just decided that maybe by, again, changing climate, changing location, getting into a space that I'm used to anyway, uh, so it doesn't feel claustrophobic to me or tiny living to me makes me feel like I'm being hugged all the time. So it's just a really good feeling. So the first time I ever walked into a tiny home, I knew, I knew that that, that was exactly what I was gonna do. I have a two burner induction cooktop and let me tell you, it boils water in 60 seconds, which is unbelievable. I don't have a hood to take the smoke out. So this actually is something I set up. It's a little fan that I had on my desk at work. And then I just slide open my window and it just allows all of that to go outside. So if you don't have a hood or any space for one, you can kind of make your own little ventilation system. Another cool feature on this one is the strip. So it allows me to plug three things in. I can use the USB for two of them. And then when I'm not using them at all, it goes all the way down and it's flat level with the countertop, which is a really cool feature. Over here we have a pretty deep sink. It's not extremely wide, but it, it's just enough for me. I would highly recommend getting a faucet that actually pulls out because there's so many times that I will have something here and I can just actually use the water from there without having to put it in my sink and then get it get it back out so that that has been a, a great feature for me so this cutting board my daughter-in-law made me I can use it in many different ways um, I can use it as I'm actually preparing food and then I can just scrape everything down into the sink and keep it clean that way um, or I can flip it and then I can use it as extra prep space so if I'm doing something over here then I can have other things on my counter plus things on the stove so it really does work out great Taylor Living is who made my Murphy bed they also made all of these cabinets and they made my wardrobe and they have done an outstanding job I would highly recommend them to anyone um, the doors and the drawers are all soft clothes so they kind of go on their own and close very softly um, that I keep where um, most people do their cleaning supplies things like that under here is where I have my dishes my spices extra bowls extra things that um, I do need for cooking and like you can tell um, it's your own priority of what you want to store and for me I don't want to use the same coffee mug every day so I have a drawer full of coffee mugs and they fit just perfectly in there so it's just it's a perfect rounded out spot where I can have all that I need for the kitchen Another really cool thing about getting things out of boxes and into your home, this I bought back when I was probably about 12 years old. They were selling them for the Vietnam War. It was a fundraiser. I think they were like 250 each. But instead of being in a box now that maybe comes out for special occasions where you look at things, it's actually on display where I can look at it every single day and I think that's so important that you understand that once you get the things that you really really love out of your box you know that it's in your face and you're able to look at it and enjoy it every day and it really will make a difference for you because it has for me my fridge is a 10.0 and it is just large enough for me I also have a convection microwave which I've made pizzas, I've baked Christmas cookies, I've made biscuits, and it's out of the way because it's just right up on top and out of the way. And while we are here, 
I did want to mention Liberty Bank because they really have been outstanding to work with and I would recommend them to absolutely everyone. All they do are tiny home loans and sometimes it's very, very um, necessary for you to finance it and if you're going to, very few banks will have the ability to give you the terms that you need with the interest rate and they just, they, they just have been the best to work with for my home loan. So I was able to utilize this side of my wardrobe and due to command strips, which if you live in a tiny house, you have to have command strips, I was able to place my some of my favorite pieces of art here on the side, which has worked out wonderfully. This is a wardrobe that I was able to design giving what I thought I would need prior to moving in here. I may end up adding a couple uh, shelves, but other than that, it has worked out perfect for me. Up on top, I have my yoga mat, uh, which stores out of the way, and this is the perfect spot right here to do yoga um, because you have all the, the range of movement. Before I show you this, though, I want to talk to you about my washer dryer, washer ventless dryer. It has been um, better than anything that I thought it would be. So instead of drying out your clothes and stripping away all of the you have all the fuzz in your in your dryers and stuff uh, this actually extracts it and then tumbles it tumbles it dry and your clothes are they are fresher they are cleaner in my opinion and it has just worked out really great and plus i had them build this space specifically for it so it just kind of tucks it away and it, and it, it is out of the way but i do have a washer and dryer which uh, is great. So this is a shorter wardrobe. It does have in here many of my hanging clothes. It also has, this is my junk drawer like everybody's got one. Now this bigger one has of course the shelving down here. I have some small appliances, just odds and ends. These are my winter clothes, you know, your mask. If you want to be a butterfly, you have to put this on. Things like that. So that is part of what I store in here. And then over on this side, I use this as my pantry. But I also do store my pants in here. And if you can see the back of this door here. Back in the uh, late 1960s, I had posters all over my room. And of course, like with everything else that I've drug around with me for all these years, I drug those. And so I decided to put it one up and I, I um, Mod Podged it and I love it. Because again, you have to use the space that you find. You may want to put art on the back of, of yours. That's what I did and I, and I really, really like it a lot. I want to show you my bathroom. It does have a light that the fan is attached. so. If you have the light on, then the fan does come on. Uh, it also does have a sliding door for privacy, which is awesome. It even has a lock on it. And as you come in, I have a stand alone sink. I think it's a very good size. I also have a mirror that has an LED light in it, which is perfect um, because it is a little bit darker in here because since there are no windows. I have a flushing toilet, so I'm not on a compost or anything, but I, I prefer to have a flushing toilet. And then over here is my shower, which is a very good size, has corrugated metal on the walls. It's very easily cleaned and it, it just looks really, really nice all the time. So I, I really like it and I love the ability to be able to move around more so than in a, in a regular bathtub shower combo. Three years ago, I retired. It's interesting to look into what is affordable for you. Could it possibly be something where you might have to be living with somebody else or you know move in with family or, or things like that and i did not want to do that when this whole process started my 
debt to income ratio was so unbalanced, even though I had zero debt, then that meant that I had to have a larger down payment. And I had so much, but I didn't have what it, what it was gonna take for me to move in here. So then Operation Tiny Home, that's where they come in because they actually gave me a grant from Sutter Homes that gave them the, the grant money and that allowed me then to have the down payment that I needed so that that would make my monthly payments very affordable for me. My monthly payment is about a little over 350 and then I pay 500 for my lot space here. So what I pay now is less than what I was paying a month for my home back in the Midwest. And then I had utilities on top of that. My lot rent uh, includes all utilities. So it's not only the space, but you know, it's the water and the, the electric as well. Uh, living in a tiny home, it does help me to achieve the peace that I have needed um, for sleeping at night. It's only been maybe four or five years now that I've slept without a nightlight on. And there's, again, those are milestones that I have had to reach. Since I have lived in this tiny home, it's like being on steroids. I continue to, to conquer my fears, and it has to do with the fact that I feel safe and secure when I'm in my home. Uh, it's just a different feeling for me. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.